if professional violinists hold their violins like this, you would probably tell students who are learning to play the violin to do the same thing. And if a professional chef turns their oven to 450 to roast broccoli, you should probably do the same. And if expert problem solvers in physics draw force diagrams, you should probably tell students to draw force diagrams too, right? Maybe, but maybe not. If you've ever taken a physics class, someone has probably taught you to draw force diagrams at some point. These are just pictures that show all the forces that are going on in the problem. These diagrams help you to organize all the information in the problem in a kind of cohesive, coherent way, and it also ensures that you're not skipping over any important information. But it can also affect how creative you are in solving a problem. Researchers tested students' ability to solve physics problems that had conceptual shortcuts. So these were problems that could be solved easily if you thought about them in a slightly different way. They told one group to draw force diagrams and they didn't tell the other group any kind of instructions. They just gave them the problem. Now, as you might imagine, the students in group one drew more diagrams and drew more complete diagrams, but it didn't help them solve the problem. In one experiment, both groups got about the same number of problems correct, but in another experiment, the group who saw the instruction to draw force diagrams actually solved fewer problems. But in both experiments, the instruction to draw a force diagram prevented students from seeing the shortcut. Why? One explanation is that the students didn't really connect the diagram to the problem solving. So they were told to draw a diagram, and so they drew a diagram, and then they went off and kept solving the problem. They didn't understand how drawing the diagram could help them solve the problem. But I think it has something to do with following instructions. As we go through life, we learn and then rely on scripts. These are just automated procedures that we follow without really thinking about it. The brush your teeth script is plop, brush, spit, rinse. The script for solving a Newtonian physics problem is draw a diagram, identify the right equations, plug in the numbers, and calculate the answer. Once you read that instruction to draw a force diagram, you're thinking, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to follow the instructions. I'll just, I'll just do the thing that I'm supposed to do. There's this performative aspect to it, right? The student is doing something that the teacher asked them to do. They are performing physics rather than actually focused on solving the problem. The expert is drawing a diagram to help them figure out what's going on in the problem. But the novice is drawing a diagram because that's what you're supposed to do and it's supposed to look a certain way. You have two people performing the same behavior for different purposes and getting a different outcome. The saddest part of this is that the students who were told to draw the force diagram were more skeptical later on of informal, flexible, creative ways to solve the problems. So they viewed students who used the shortcut as doing something that was almost fundamentally illegitimate, while the students who didn't see the instruction viewed multiple ways of solving the problem as equally okay. That's why I think of using force diagrams or equations as tools to help you solve the problem rather than as routines or as fixed procedures. A tool is flexible and can be pulled out only when you think it's gonna be useful. For more on the psychology of problem solving, check out these videos over here. See you next time.